next topic to come into and something that I've been eager on the edge of my seat to talk about and I'm so excited to hear what some of you guys have to say about this quite interesting development but something that I'm not too surprised about. So as I reported on my on my podcast the other day, um, Daniel Lee, the former creative director of Bottega Veneta, the guy that was basically responsible for reviving that brand and bringing it back into the cultural zeitgeist, making it a must-have item in any fashion fan's wardrobe, had been let go, fired, walked away. Something happened over the last couple of weeks and everyone was kind of, you know, everyone in the kind of fashion Twitter space or the fashion social media space was like, huh? This is nuts. How's the guy responsible for reviving a brand and the one solely responsible for obviously increasing increasing its sales and revenue that sort of shit leaving now especially now where it's just about to get good what is that, how does that make any sense but then i was thinking myself when i read the statement and saw the leaks that were coming out or maybe some of the reports and i saw some passive aggressive post from a supporter of the now um creative director of Bottega Veneta Matteo Blazy um there was a there's a woman I forgot who it was some verified lady who left some comment underneath his post where he basically said I've got the job where he said something like oh um that is congratulations um much well deserved for like a great guy who's respectful who treats his colleagues with respect like loads of those kind of like um subliminals that she was throwing out and made me think hmm did Daniel Lee was either Daniel Lee was not that well regarded behind the scenes. He was a bit of a prick and everyone didn't like him and it's like good riddance. Or he didn't leave, you know, under his own accord. And he actually left because he was probably going to get fired because of something he might have done behind the scenes that people didn't like. And hence why the rush to appoint somebody in-house instead of going and sourcing somebody away to kind of move things on was because, you know, just went to continue like the whatever. You get the point, right? So that's what people were kind of hypothesizing and kind of figuring out away from it. But the news kind of died down, it felt like, about the the kind of rumors as to why Daniel Lee wasn't at Bottega Veneta anymore because everyone, it looks like in fashion, was big fans of this Matteo Blazy guy, maybe because of his relationship um, with the, I forgot the other designer that he's kind of relationship with, or maybe because fashion people knew behind the scenes that he was actually the person responsible for the magic at um, Bottega Veneta, or maybe they were very aware of his work that he did at Celine and what he did at Maison Margiela. But a lot of fashion people that I followed that I respect were very enthusiastic about the new appointment of creative director Abertek Vanessa and the Daniel Lee news kind of was pushed aside everyone kind of forgot about it and moved on but I was still interested I was still curious why did this guy leave it doesn't make any sense and also I was curious what's the next steps somebody as talented as he is or who has the ability to kind of you know revive brands like that and have such a discernible code or style that he kind of imbued or aesthetically was able to kind of weave into Bottega Veneta you would imagine that another brand would want to kind of you know snap him up quite quickly or he wants to maybe capitalize on his kind of notoriety and his fame and maybe launch his own namesake brand you'd imagine that so right you'd imagine well it looks like that namesake brand unless it's called what he basically called someone in the meeting, it's going to be very, very long before we heard that namesake brand being launched. Because um, according to this fashion insider called Luis Pisano, who I follow on Twitter, Luis Pisano, I think he's a French dude. Um, he, you know, he's, he's a good follower on social media in general, a bit of a fun, outspoken kind of guy. And he said the following, allegedly, and this comes from an incredibly close to the matter and reliable source Daniel Lee was promptly fired by Francois Henri Pinot after he allegedly called somebody a fucking nigger in a meeting at Bottega Veneta <laughs> I repeat Daniel Lee the guy that was pandering to all the blacks the guy that all my cool black fashion friends were sucking off and you know happy that he could call him friend and they got invited to shows and they were posting pics of their invite and taking pictures of their feet with their tire boots and their puddle shoes and their bags and their jackets and their jumpers and you know posting pictures of them outside the shop with the massive green bag shopping blowing a bag maybe getting stuff on discount it doesn't matter just enjoying the Bottega Veneta lifestyle loving every minute of it all those people that were just yeah he is for the culture because he put some big girl on the flipping advertisement somewhere or because you put this black guy with dreads on there whatever right yeah he's for the culture yeah yeah for the culture this same guy allegedly and this comes from an incredibly close source according to Luis Pizano on Twitter said to the matter and a reliable source 
Daniel Lee was promptly fired by Francois Henri Benoit, the guy that Kanye name drops, right? The head of caring or that whole flipping, you know, whatever group conglomerate you call it, right? Is that the same person? It is the same person, right? I'm sure it's the same person. After he allegedly called somebody a fucking nigger in a meeting at Bottega Veneta. The first thing I want to know, what sort of all hands meeting, right, would require you to call anybody a fucking anything? Usually fucking when you're like saying it in like a meeting way. Usually, yeah, usually even the word fucking itself in a meeting is something that would kind of catch the breath of everybody. Everybody like, oh, he said the F word. You say it outside of the outside of the meeting room. You obviously say it with your colleagues when you're on a night out having a couple of drinks, right? But you say it in a meeting room when you're having a, 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 an all hands, a company all hands, or you're trying to sort out something for whatever. I don't know, whatever. Or even a stand-up. People are going to look at you like, this guy's a psycho. So imagine adding the flipping nigger with the ER at the end of it. So not only you swore amongst your colleagues in front of your colleagues, you know, to a, a fellow staff member or to an employee or to somebody that you hired personally. Not only do you do that, you also call them an ER at the end. An ER. Are you insane, bruv? Are you insane? And this is the guy that everyone was flipping, jacking off and saying he was doing this for the culture, doing that for the culture. Again, man, we are, we are easy people to please, isn't it? Put a couple of black people in the runway, right? Yeah, he's a CEO of Caring. I knew it. That's why Francois and Pino, um, a very wealthy man, right? How much is he worth, this Francois? It doesn't matter. But anyway, we are easy people to please, isn't it, right? You put a couple of people that look like us on the runway. You maybe hire some people behind the scenes to do some seeding. Maybe send a couple of people some free heels and free bags. Maybe put them in a runway show. Maybe re maybe kind of, you know, like an image they shared. Get them to handle social media. Whatever it may be. Just some peripheral stuff. Nothing that's actually going to change the gears and the kind of, you know power dynamics that exist in the fashion industry just kind of you know the kind of peripheral stuff right you get maybe someone that you you know someone from out some, someone from the black community quote unquote to do the flipping door and after party and now suddenly you are a flipping um an ally a friend and something it's like it's garbage it's all garbage it's all lip service it's always been lip service and i've never believed it which is why i've generally in my opinion for all the kind of moral um ideologically based posturing that all these fashion brands do is empty and hollow because guess what most fashion people are empty and hollow too it's the whole point of it if you're in fashion you're essentially committing to a life of superfluous um you know consumption right you have to justify the fact that you want to get this luebe um, new season um knee length flipping coat even though you've got another one from the past season because it's fashion None of it makes sense. There's nothing sustainable about buying 17 pea coats, but you do it anyway because you love it. Same with me. I do the same thing. How many flipping black jackets do I have? How many Rick Owen pants do I own? How many is enough? How many geo baskets does one man need before he says enough's enough? But I'm going to do it myself and I'm a hypocrite, but I know it. I know I'm a hypocrite. I know I chat shit. I know I don't stand for anything for the most part, which is why I'm trying to change. And I'm trying to actually have some sort of moral backbone, have some sort of principles. But these fashion brands, they pretend and lie that they do. They act like they do. They do lip service. They put a black square up on their flipping grid. And since then, what's changed? Who have you hired in a position of power in your company from the black community? No one. You, but you put up a square. All right, cool. Brilliant. You booked one of my mates to DJ after party. Great, amazing, over the moon at that. Come on, man. Which is why I appreciate brands or I appreciate designers like Hedy Slimain at Saint Laurent Paris, right? For a long period of time, it, it, no, he got kicked, he, he got dragged kicking and screaming just to put skinny, young black kids in his runway. He didn't even care about that. He just wanted it to be all white. He was an all Aryan race runway. And you just, I'm about, I'm about the clothes, I don't represent the scene, I love. He, Bruv, Hedy Simone is probably still listening to Vampire Weekend to this day. He probably still bangs Arctic Monkey in his office to this day. The kinks, the kooks. He's listened to that shit all this day. So those guys are his idols. He just wants an all white, all white cast, bruv. That's what he's want. Then it took some time, some prodding and prodding, some, some encouragement, some maybe some public embarrassment, some teasing online. And then, of course, he kind of acquiesced and said, okay, I'll include a couple of black TikTokers. Cool. You know, let's get them in there. But they all look the same. Skinny guys. That's what he loves. And he just puts out clothes. 
No political messages. Maybe there are some political undertones there, I'm sure, in the themes and the motifs and the locations, the way he does his shows nowadays, especially with Celine. I'm sure there's political and socioeconomical flipping, you know, things that you can pull away from it. But for the most part, he's just selling you clothes. Clothes. Rick Owens, the same thing. Yes, there are some ties to his you know, his interesting background and his kind of uh, identity and his journey in fashion and his interest and his, you know, his taste level and what he's into movies. And I'm sure. But for the most part, it's just close. Demna for a long time. Oh, this guy's being too ironic. He's taking the piss, stereotypes, all this stuff. At the end of the day, he just makes great clothes. No real overt crazy political message because the guys that scream the most about all that shit are probably the ones that have the most skeletons in their cupboard. And look, allegedly, the guy Daniel Lee, the one that just did a show in flipping uh, Motor City, he went to Detroit, the home of techno, right? Hired Carl Craig to do the fucking soundtrack. Was it Carl Craig? Was it Carl Craig? What's his name? Is it Carl Craig? Am I mistaken? Is it Carl Craig did a soundtrack? One, is it Carl Craig? He must have done it, Carl Craig. Let me double check. Was it Carl Craig? I did a soundtrack of, uh, of Bottega Veneta at Detroit. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure it was Carl Craig. Carl Craig. Uh, uh, yeah, it was Carl Craig. It was, yeah, it was. He hired Carl Craig to do the flipping um, soundtrack or to do this, you know, the soundscape or whatever of the show there. He had a, 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 a cast full of people from all over the world, you know, People would, you know, that looked racially ambiguous. He checked, checked, ticked every box. The clothes were fucking garbage. Just be honest about it. No one wants to talk about that. The recent show was fucking shit. But he ticked every show. He ticked every box, sorry. He, you know, he transferred his entire show, his entire team over there to Detroit. And look what happened in the end. In the end, he got fired because allegedly he called uh, somebody that works for him in a meeting. In a meeting. People kicked off about what um, what's the name did what um, John Galliano did in that cafe, right? Those famous um, anti-Semitic flipping comments that he made. But he was out that he was outside somewhere. At least he was being antagonized by like a stranger. Again, no one justifying what the fuck he was saying. But he was involved in some sort of verbal altercation with somebody outside, and he decided to go for the old anti-Semit, uh, you know, anti-Semite insults in order to get a one-up. And then obviously lost his entire career for a short period of time, and lost his mind, and then came back and walked straight back into a very high-level job. But we'll talk about that another time, right? But at least there was someone, you know, outside he had an argument with. What could somebody have possibly done in a meeting that would? Um, elicit somebody like a Daniel Lee to say something like that in front of them and also how comfortable does someone like a Daniel Lee feel who flipping looks like that right somebody that looks like that would feel comfortable enough to call somebody else a nigger like in a meeting bruv this this is basically the fault and again this I lay the fault at the feet of people around him who enabled him, let, let him feel like he could walk around with his chest held up high, like his shit didn't stink, like he was the big bee's knees. You enabled this guy. That, and fashion does this all the time. They enable, they gas up, they pour flipping essentially um, gasoline on a fire because they want to see more magic, more sparks, more, more, more. And then the moment it gets too crazy, they all kind of back away like, oh, I didn't know it was going to get this crazy. It's like, fuck off, man. You enabled this guy. You enabled him. You enabled him. I'm sure this isn't the first, again, maybe it's the first time he said something racial, allegedly, but this can't be the first time he's got into some sort of fracas or got in some sort of like tit for tat with somebody. I'm sure, again, I'm not in the scene. I'm not in the industry. I don't have any behind the scenes information. I'm happy about that. The only connection I have to fashion is the fact that I went to a fashion school in Central St. Martins, but I studied product design there. I didn't study anything to do with fashion. And apart from that, I enjoy it from a distance. I buy the magazines that all you motherfuckers buy. I read the same sites. I watch the same documentaries i follow the same people on social media but i don't go anywhere near those guys anywhere near them because they're flipping toxic toxic individuals and there's this horrible kind of like hush hush don't talk about this sort of culture that i hate as well one of the main guys or well, main guys another another thing that i wanted to point out quickly because of that hush hush thing what's his name um that that uh what's his face that bibby guy what's his name is it bibby what's his face that does the black fashion fair um He's somebody that was incredibly vocal about some of the stuff that Virgil was getting up to during the pandemic times. I think, was it during the, the, the kind of the, um, 
the reaction to like the George Floyd death. You remember when Virgil was doing some nonsense with that? I forgot what he did. Maybe it was it, it was a fifty dollar um, donation or something, right? Then there was that flipping screenshot of him talking to Shim- Timothy Chamelay and saying that he's going to solve racism. Remember all that nonsense? He was he and along with the other people were quite critical of Virgil. Oh, you didn't do that. You didn't do this. Ah, you know, calling him out of his name, all this stuff. Okay, cool. Warranted, maybe deserved, maybe over over egged, but whatever. Everyone did. Everyone did. It. I think I even commented it myself. Cool. Then this situation happens, right? With flipping Daniel Lee, allegedly, right? It's the news of the towns all over the place. And this same guy, right? This Bibi, what's his name? Bibi Gregory, um, who's the founder of the Black Fashion Fair, does amazing stuff. The Black Fashion Fair has gone from success to success. He's also involved with um, Theophilo, um, that incredible brand. He's, he says here from his, um, in, from his Twitter, he's a brand director there. He had a lot of things to say about that sort of stuff. And again, he's a very strong proponent of um, Bottega Veneta. Yeah, I think he was one of the first people I saw on social wearing the, the puddle boots. And he's, I think he's got a pair of the tire boots and shit. He's always showing them in fits. They look great with these flipping big, wide, baggy pants you know great looks hasn't said a word about it directly the only one thing he said about it on his twitter page about it again again the hypocrisy of fashion people is just it never never baffles me so virgil gets many tweets directed at him about the thing that he did which obviously was you know at the time insensitive maybe a bit lame maybe whatever but again look back on it a little bit of a reaction in that regard this is a alleged incident that allegedly happened that people are saying and again, this is a, a black person saying it too. It's not some random white person coming out and saying it. And again, the, the sad thing also is that it's not even a black person that works in the company saying it. That black person that maybe, allegedly, had that said to them is so scared to come out and say it because they know that if they do come out and say it again, because I'm, I'm pissed off about it. If, if, if it was me, I would come out and say it. But I'm, I'm a flipping reckless um, kamikaze type of guy. I mean, I'm ranting and raving here in my apartment on my own sweating. Do you know what I mean? I don't, you know what I mean? I'm not the best kind of um, guy for that kind of advice. But if you, know, if you want to actually have a, a career in fashion, you can't come out and say this, right? You can't come out and basically open and basically, you know, uh, spill the tea because it's going to ruin your chances in fashion altogether because people are going to think that you're a bit of a tattletale and it's going to, you know, curtail your career and you'll never be seen again. So that's a sad thing. But again, a black guy came out and said this, allegedly this happened, and this big, big guy had a lot to say about Virgil and look what he says about flipping Daniel Lee. It's been over 20 years and people still believe Tommy Hilfiger went on Oprah and made racially charged comments. People believe what he said. Um, people believe that he said he didn't want, no, people say he didn't want black and Asian people wearing his clothes. He never said this. And I said that to say whether it's true or not, the damage is already done. So he didn't even address it directly. He didn't say the name, but take it. He didn't say anything about Daniel Lee. Said some roundabout thing about Tommy Hilfiger, some story from yesteryears that's been forgotten about and moved on. And he used that as an excuse to not comment on it because guess what? You want to protect your relationships, isn't it? You want to protect your relationships. Absolutely disgusting. And again, it's just pick and choose. Pick and choose. Because what? He was somebody that was well regarded in the industry because Bottega Venera has got the lens because of caring. Like, awful, 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 awful. And again, who knows if it's true? It could be all false. It could be all made up. But I just can't believe that somebody in that office let somebody with a chest that looks like that, right? A little bird chest. It's funny, though, because I think when he took that picture, he generally thought he was going to look like Daniel Craig, isn't it, right? This picture here. That's what he thought he was going for. He thought he was going to look like that. But in actuality, Daniel Lee looks like that. Uh, he looks much better with a t-shirt on. Here he looks really handsome. But the other one, he's got a kind of, he's got, you've got to put a shirt on, brother. You've got to put a shirt on. But yeah, um, a guy like that was the one that did that. And again, we shouldn't be surprised, isn't it? We shouldn't be surprised. He's the one that went to Berghain, did that thing at the height of the pandemic, didn't say sorry. You know, they had a police investigation opened up on Bottega Veneta. Like loads of, it's caused them a lot of drama. So I'm not surprised that they said, you know what, let's get this absolute dimwit out of this building ASAP. Um, but where's the, what's the thing I wanted to show you about the, oh yeah, this is the thing. And I remember talking about the whole pandering thing, which kind of touches on what Brian Boy said um, in July that he got absolutely ripped for on social media. I think some people are saying that, oh, Brian Boy can't talk about it. I, I don't know what the issue is with Brian Boy on social media. People need to educate me on this. It seems that like Brian Boy can't talk when it comes to certain issues with certain people. They don't really like him. I don't know why. Um, he's Don't get me wrong. He's not the most likable person in the world his whole kind of um rich woman rich uh wife stick thing is a bit cringe and a bit annoying after a while uh yeah yeah you know i mean it is what it is but you know he's a, he's a decent follow whatever it may be um and he said he said i think sometime in july and i think i was saying the same thing just in general in fashion when it came to just the over if it, it felt like abundance of flipping black people singing and dancing and jumping and ah ah 
that and dreads everywhere on fashion shows like on billboards like well this is gross what are you guys doing are you trying to convince us that you like black people you obviously don't we and, and, and again we don't care because black people just buy the clothes anyway there's plenty of people buying Dolce Gabbana they don't really care that maybe you know the fans of Dolce Gabbana probably want to spit on you if you're on fire and shit but they don't care they just wear the clothes but this whole like you know moral posturing whatever it may be or it's just it's just gross and I called it out back then myself privately but I think um but uh, what's his name Brian Boy put it on wax but then of course he got shook again the fashion thing delete his tweet like a baby um, and ran away from it but he basically said you know Danny Lewis pandering to black people and I was saying the same thing just in general about the fashion scene and I made this tweet in August um, which kind of talks about oh no the, the tweet in August was in relation to this advert um, with Tiffany's and I think this had to do with the same time when Jay-Z and Beyonce did that collection with Tiffany's too or were in the advert for it or whatever it may be and they did a little shoot they did with um, Alton Mason again the another go-to uh, black fashion guy that everyone kind of uses on their run on their runaway right dark skin guy really good looking um, looks looks amazing in clothes moves amazing on the runway get him on the runway in the front row or get him to kind of open the shows so people think that you like black people do you know I mean always in nonsense and for whatever reason they got him to do this stuff where he's fucking break dancing for Tiffany's and co right and this is a tweet I read that says not sure how I feel about this luxury brands like Protective Veneta and Tiffany and co pandering to black people there's no point in having us break dancing and pop shoving all over the place when no one that looks like us is working in the head office which is you know basically true and the video itself um i'm not gonna hopefully the, the music doesn't play because it's nas tune it's out of mason in the basketball courtyard somewhere doing his standard back flips and you know oh let's get the off flips and stuff and break dance moves for tiffany and co right wearing a tuxedo and kids around him are skateboarding and pop shoving and kick flipping all over the place and the thing that makes it funny is that number one it's for Tiffany and Co. And they're doing this in a project somewhere in America. Most people in those kind of buildings next to there can't even afford to keep the lights on or are struggling to flip and put food in their kids' plates. And yet they've got a brand in their courtyard doing these flips and flips and whatnot. And one of their earrings probably costs the, you know, the entirety of what their rent would cost for an entire year. The second other thing about it is that Alta Mesa is doing flips and kicks and stuff in a tuxedo for Tiffany. Don't make that sense. And the other thing that's really interesting about it is that they're trying to market this to like, what, an urban clientele when you know, you know yourself, if you was to rock up to a Tiffany's and co, looking the way that I do, carrying a skateboard, maybe just even wearing the stuff that I am now with the tracksuit bottoms and just looking scruffy and shit, you would have a security guard following you the entirety of the time that you're in there. And if you've ever been to a Tiffany and co store, they're not that big. The security guard would be following you and letting it be known that I am watching you. That's how they would make you feel. But here they are in these adverts trying to make it seem that they're down with the culture and stuff and they're for the people. Get the fuck out of here. Make me my diamonds. Make me my, my Cuban Sarko, so Cubans, whatever the words are. Do you know what I mean? Make me my little clip on earrings. Make my rings. Make my bracelets and let me go on my way. Give me my little Tiffany blue bag and let me clap myself up as I'm on a train, impress some strangers whilst I put the little bag on my lap and yet they don't know that I just got the cheapest thing in the store. Don't push it to me. I don't care because I know you're all full of bullshit. And I think this Danny Lee story is definitely the epitome of it. But again, thoughts and feelings go out to whoever the guy was or girl who was at the end of that racial tirade, that horrible racial tirade, allegedly that happened, supposedly that happened. And then Kering themselves come out and responded to this. They responded to this flat out and said that wasn't true. And probably the reason why they responded to this wasn't true because... That only still a price commodity. They probably still want to shuffle him inside of carrying somewhere and put him into another brand anyway, because there's a dearth or there's a lack of like designers at that level who can move the needle. Who can you know if he gets hired to another brand, he's bringing with him an, an inbuilt audience. No, he's, he's he's bringing over an audience with him, which brands obviously love, right? Um, he's going to be able to sell out stuff, and they're going to, be able to change things, and they'll be able to be more contemporary and get with the kids and whatnot. So I understand why Caring are trying to protect their investment in one way, and also understand on their point from a brand wise, if they come out and say that was true, and it kind of gets uncovered that there were other instances of Daniel Lee's um, supposed alleged verbal <laughs> racial tyranny at people it's going to make them look worse too because it, it means that what what was the why was this the straw that broke the camel's back why didn't you let go of him when he said that other thing to someone else that other thing to someone else so, you know what I mean it continues, continues. anyway it says the following 
The cut, it says here, Karen responds to allegations against ex Bottega Veneta designer. Ever since the news broke last week, designer Daniel Lee suddenly parent ways, um, where he served as creative director for three years and being replaced by uh, Matteo Blasi uh, from within. Some couldn't help but wonder what had the heck happened in the press release. Um, last week, the Italian fashion house said in the end of his collaboration with Lee was a joint decision. See, they said joint decision, which makes me believe it was definitely um, gross misconduct because usually at that level if you've got gross misconduct on you you can negotiate a way to kind of get out the contract without leaving so you don't rep ruin reputation also like again if they want to reshuffle you inside their own little corporation or conglomerate or whatever it may be called they can do so as well you know it continues as, however, on Wednesday night, fashion writer Luis Pisano tweeted the following, da, da, da. early Thursday morning, Kerry responded on Twitter saying, we deny what you've been told and what you have shared about the reasons of the departure of Daniel Lee from Protecta Veneta. Very cold, very dry, right? So it's obviously them either defending Daniel Lee or it's them basically saying, you can get away with saying supposed alleged racist things to your employees um, you know, with reckless abandon and these big corporations will protect you because you're able to sell a couple of puddle boots. Like, it's pretty disgusting if you think about it. Like, think about it in that way. Um, especially if you're somebody that works at Protect Veneta or you work at Kering and you're black. Think about what that says to you, that these companies are willing to come out, make a statement about that, you know, and say, no, nah, he didn't say that. He didn't, he didn't. You're lying, you're lying, you're lying. Um, and basically gaslight you and make you, put you in a position where you can't, um, come out and talk about any other grievances that you have but again anyone that let you know I, again anyone that let somebody with the chest like this say that you know i don't know man i don't know that's when you know you're indoctrinated with fashion if you let somebody that looks like this come out and say that to you like i don't know he looks like he's like five foot two or something as well like really like come on man you let a man that looks like that say that to you about just because you want to wear a couple of pairs of don't get me wrong the boots are sick I'm still gonna, I'm still probably gonna wear the boots. I'm I'm not the best guy when it comes to all that sort of shit. Like I said, I don't like political posturing, but I'm just thinking. Oh, sorry, I don't like um posturing in general. But I'm just thinking when it comes to people and stuff like all my friends that were out there fucking jocking this brand and acting really holier, bigger than Dan, right? Because they got invited to these shows and stuff with this guy. And look what he says about us behind closed doors, bruv. Look what he actually thinks about us when he gets angry, when he gets in the mood. Because again, it's like with these streamers online. They get angry, they get frustrated with the game. It's like, nigga! Do you know what I mean? That's what the first thing they scream. Nigga, nigga, nigga. It's like, why is that the first word that comes out of your mouth when you're frustrated or when you want to illustrate your frustration vocally? Or you want, yeah, you, you, you want to vocalize your frustration. The first thing that comes out of your mouth is nigger. N with the ER as well. Not, not the nigger, not, not, the, not, the, not the YG nigger, right? Not the LA nigger, but the flipping nigger. Like, God damn it, man. You guys are crazy. But again... Here we are, innit? Who knows if it's true? Who knows if it isn't? It'd be just to see. But the question I want to know, will everyone burn their puddle boots and their tyre boots? Will there be a mass protest and a bonfiring of people chucking all their protective and stuff into a bonfire and saying enough with that brand? Or will you all just pretend it didn't happen and quietly buy up all the stuff from Blasi when that eventually does drop? I know what the answer is. You know what the answer is. That's why fashion people are full of shit.